Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly handsome science teacher. And in this video, we're going to be learning about the sun. So if you go outside and you look up in the day, and you probably shouldn't do this because it's bad for your eyes, uh, but you will notice this giant yellow glowing ball in the sky, uh, which I know is like surprising and stuff because you probably never realized that. But there is this giant glowing yellow ball outside in the day, and it is called the sun. Well, what is the sun exactly? Uh, it is a, a star, and just like all the stars at night, and you probably knew that too already, the sun is a star. It's the closest star to the earth, and it is a system, so like most stars, uh, which is made up of many objects that orbit the star. So in this video, we're going to be talking about what is the sun, uh, how did it form, what are some of the main characteristics of the sun? And uh, how does the sun affect and sunlight affect us here on the earth? And as we talk about the sun, you can, in your mind, be thinking about other stars and relating this to other stars because the sun is our star, it's our sun. And the same thing is going on pretty much around every star, every single star. Uh, you can see about 7,000 stars with your eyes at night, but of course there are trillions and trillions and trillions of them uh, in the universe. And all of these stars are very similar in that uh, they have things orbiting them. Uh, so um, let's start with some of the characteristics of El Senor Sun. The sun is uh, a million times larger than the earth, which is pretty big. It has, when I want to say a million times, I mean in terms of volume. It's only about 330,000 times the mass. That means the number of atoms because they're spread further out than the earth. The earth is more compact. It's more dense. So the sun takes up about a million times more space than the earth while having 330,000 times more mass than the earth. Now, of course, the earth is more dense because the earth is solid and it has a surface. It's uh, hard. We can walk around on it, right? Seems like that's what we do all the time, if I'm not mistaken. And the uh, sun is not solid. There is no surface. There, it's it's gas all the way through. So that's why it spreads out uh, more. Even though it has uh, only 330,000 times more mass, uh, yet it takes up a million times more space because the gas is able to spread out uh, quite a bit more. Okay, Let's talk about the structure of the sun for a minute. So just like the Earth ha has layers, and I talk about those layers in another video, the layers of the earth. So too does the sun. The sun has layers. So we start with the core. And the core is the hard, hottest, not hardest, hottest part of the sun. Uh, it's right around a million degrees or so. And in the core, that is where uh, nuclear reactions are occurring. That's where the uh, fuel, which is hydrogen, is being converted through nuclear reactions into uh, helium. Okay, and we say burning. Uh, it's not exactly burning, but it's kind of the same idea. Where, where the uh, hydrogen is being burned or consumed or converted into helium. And this creates a tremendous amount of energy uh, in the form of light and in the form of uh, ultraviolet uh, energy 
and all kinds of radiation and uh, different uh, parts of the electromagnetic spectrum that we'll talk about here in a couple of minutes. So from there, the energy that is produced in the core has to work its way out to the surface to, uh, so that it can escape and eventually make it into outer space. So in order to do that, it first radiates. It goes through this little uh, layer called the radiative uh, layer uh, or, well, radiative layer of the uh, sun where it's just radiating. That means it's going out in every direction equally. Eventually, the light, the energy, the electromagnetic radiation that is created in the sun's core, and again, in the cores of all stars, eventually it exits out of this radiative zone, and it reaches a, another zone called the convective zone. Okay, convective. That is another fancy sciencey word, a big sciencey word that just means to rotate, to go up and down. We know that when things are heated, anything, when we heat it up, it rises. Okay, that's why the attic in a house is much warmer than the basement, and the basement is cooler because things that are heated rise. Air, when it's heated, rise. Gas, when it's heated, rises. And then when it cools down, it falls again. So the gas that is heated in the core and then radiated out through the radiative zone eventually reaches the convective zone. And it uh, goes through what is called convection, meaning that it uh, circulates up as it is hot. And then as it cools and becomes cooler, it falls back down, creating these giant loops of convection. And we can actually see this convection uh, as we look at the surface of this, the sun, where we see like sunspots and things. The, the lighter colors are where the hot gas is rising, and the darker colors, the cells uh, of darker colors on the surface of the sun is where uh, cooler gas is falling. Once the light, and it takes a long time, by the way, for the light and the energy to reach the surface of uh, the sun. We're talking, uh, you know, many, many, many years. But once it reaches the surface, finally it can escape. It's free. It's like, hooray, I'm out of here. And it flies off at the speed of light. And from there, because the sun is about 93 million miles away from the earth, it reaches the earth, you know, traveling at the speed of light in about eight minutes. So now, let's talk uh, for a minute about how the sun formed. That's what the sun is, okay? That's the description from the inside out of the sun, but how did it form? How did it get there? Uh, where did the sun come from anyway? And uh, Again, remember that as we talk about this, you're also thinking about other stars which form in the same way. So as we look out across the universe through a telescope, we can see this happening uh, all around us. We can see places where new stars are forming and where their old stars are dying. And we can apply that. In fact, that's how we know by observing the universe and, you know, we're in this finite little period of time. Our lives are very short compared to the billions and billions of years of the life of a star. But because there are so many stars and they're all out in different parts of their life, we can look at them and see all the different ages of stars. And then we can know this is how they're born. This is how they're died. It's kind of like imagine looking at a population of people and seeing some babies and some old people, and some middle-aged people, and some really handsome people, and being like, okay, well, maybe I can't see my whole life right now, but I can assume, because I see some babies, that that's probably how humans start, and I can assume, because I see some old people, that that's how people die, and we do kind of the same thing with stars, okay? So how, pray tell, do stars begin their life? What does a baby star look like? How is a star born? So imagine a nebula. A nebula is a, a 
a cloud of gas and dust in outer space. And these ne nebulae are found all over the uh, universe. In our galaxy, there are several of them, and they are very beautiful, okay? And inside of a nebula, because they're huge, some of them, many of them are vast, covering trillions and trillions and trillions of miles of space, you have all of this gas and dust. It's just kind of floating there. And eventually, something happens. Uh, it could be a shock wave or uh, some of the gas just gets too close to each other. And the gas starts to condense underneath its own gravity. And it starts to clump up. And as it clumps up, it kind of starts to rotate. Uh, for reasons having to do with physics that we're not going to get into in this video. But think of when you drain a tub, what happens, right? The water rotates as it goes down the drain. Okay? Kind of a similar process going on. So the water, i going to fly in here. Fly wants to be in my video. I mean, and not the water. The gas uh, rotates around the center of uh, the gravity, and it condenses it pulls in and as it pulls in most of the gas in the case of our sun it's 98 percent of the matter in the solar system ends up in the star but some of it because a disc forms around that spinning action in the middle and in within that disc sometimes uh, other things form like planets and moons that get their own little spinning uh, action going on and asteroids and comets and things will form around inside around the star inside that disk and then eventually the star gets big enough it reaches critical mass and it turns on it's like a switch uh, the center heats up and nuclear reactions begin it, it turns on starts glowing and then when that happens it's really kind of the end of the formation of the star because the radiation then from the star blows out. It creates a solar wind or a stellar wind if we're talking about other stars. The same thing. And it blows all of that dust and gas out of the system. And that's really the end of the formation. And then you, from then on, you have a star and a uh, planets and moons and a whole system. Now, sometimes it's kind of cool. You get more than one star. You might have a binary or even three or four stars that are all in the same system orbiting each other. And so if you if we lived in that kind of a system, we'd actually have multiple suns instead of just one. Uh, so that's kind of neat. So that's how a star is born. Well, how does a star die? Now, this is more complicated, okay, because it depends on the size of El Senor star. Uh, Smaller stars like the sun, and I know we think of the sun as very big, and it is compared to the earth, very big, but it's actually just a medium-sized star. It's not uh, even close to one of the biggest stars. There are stars incredibly, incredibly huge compared to the sun. Okay, there are some stars that take up so much volume that uh, the, our sun is even smaller compared to them than the earth is to the sun, uh, but... Uh, the smaller or medium-sized stars, like ours, eventually near the end of their life, when they start to run out of hydrogen, they begin to collapse, and that heats them up and causes them to then begin to burn uh, helium as their fuel because they get hotter, and when you get hot enough, you can burn helium. And that causes the stars to super inflate. They get, they're not getting more massive, more mass. They're getting just bigger volume because they're hotter. And uh, when that happens, we call them a giant or a super giant, okay? And then eventually they run out of helium uh, much quicker than they do than they run out of hydrogen because they burn it faster. And then they start to come back in and they start to decrease. And as they do that, they leave behind, uh, from the, when they were big, massive stars, they leave behind a lot of their ma their mass in a dust cloud. And we call that a planetary nebula. And they're really pretty. Okay, but they're short-lived. And then they shrink down and they become a uh, white dwarf star, which is what the what will happen to the sun. So at the end of its life, it's going to expand 
uh, and it's going to become a uh, very large star and it's going to engulf uh, all of the inner planets except perhaps Mars. It might even engulf Mars. So all of the inner planets will be consumed, or they'll be in, including Earth, be inside the sun. And then it's going to shrink back down and uh, become, slowly become smaller. And it will leave behind a lot of its gases in a beautiful planetary nebula as it shrinks back down. And it will become a white dwarf where it will remain a white dwarf. A white dwarf is a uh, star, an old dead star that is no longer uh, doing nuclear reactions and is, is still glowing because of the leftover residual heat from when it used to be alive. And it takes a long time, trillions of years, to fully cool down and become a black dwarf. Uh, and once it's totally cool, which again is like trillions of years, then it will be a black dwarf for the rest of time. So that is uh, the fate of our sun. Now I will just say that uh, some stars are too big to become white dwarfs and they, instead of expanding and slowly and then contracting, they actually, well, they expand and then they actually, as they start to contract, they actually explode and they become uh, what we call supernova. And some, from that point become black holes and others become neutron stars, which we don't get into in this video. I do that in another video. So we'll talk about that in another video. Okay. Well, what we really care about, what I want you to remember is that in the case of the sun, because it is a medium sized star, uh, the sun is, is not going to go supernova or become a black hole. It will be a planetary nebula and then it will shrink down, become a white dwarf for trillions of years. And then eventually, a black dwarf, a dead, dark rock in uh, outer space. Now, last thing I want to talk about in this video is sunlight. Okay, I want you to just uh, remember that sunlight is uh, consists of all of the radiation that is produced by the sun. There are colors, there are seven colors that we can see, and they're the colors of the rainbow. When we look at sunlight, we tend to think of it as yellow, and it is, but it's also red, and it's also orange, and uh, you know, yellow and green and uh, indigo, and I forget all the colors, uh, blue and purple. Violet, you're turning violet, violet. That's the real word for, for anyway. Um, so all of those colors, and then there's a lot of colors we can't see with our eye. Uh, like ultraviolet, uh, which is what gives us a sunburn. Okay, it's a kind of light, light electromagnetic energy that we cannot see, but that's how we get sunburned. Uh, and there are uh, there's radio waves and microwaves, and uh, yes, not like actual microwaves, you know, not like a box coming out of the sun, a microwave oven, but microwaves the actual waves and x-rays and all kinds of gamma rays, all kinds of radiation that are produced in the sun that also hit the earth uh, from the sun. And they're all different forms of uh, electromagnetic radiation, which is what light is. Okay, so that's sunlight. And we can prove this by using equipment to detect those rays, those waves, and also using a prism. You take a prism hold it in the light, and it will divide the yellow light out into all of the colors of uh, the rainbow. And uh, that's what the rain does, right? The rain is like a prism. Water droplets are like prisms, and they separate out the uh, droplets, I'm sorry, the yellow light, from yellow to all the colors of the rainbow. So that, dear half-sized human children, uh, you are half-sized humans because you're not yet fully grown, in case you were wondering. That, dear half-sized humans, is uh, a the sun. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for. 
if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos, and they're much more targeted, and those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.